Let me give a very quick explanation of a couple problems that are similar to your homework in section one five, like five, six, and seven, possibly. And these problems come from your book, section one five, and you find them in problems similar to one through 12 in the book. You can find examples one and two in the book that match some of these problems. So write the following in terms of sine and cosine. Simplify if possible. Your answer should only contain sine and cosine. Here, I would finish this problem with the answer sine squared x. And the way I do that is to write sine and cosecant in terms of sine. Sine's already in terms of sine. Cosecant, remember, is the reciprocal sine. So I write one over sine. And then I divide by a fraction by saying multiply by the reciprocal. And when I multiply this sine x times sine x over 1, consider them both to be sine x over 1 if you like, I get sine squared x divided by 1, which is just sine squared x. OK, likewise. The second problem here has got a couple more pieces to it. Write in terms of sine and cosine alone, simplify if possible. So tangent and secant, excuse me why I recenter this, can be written in terms of sine and cosine, sine x or cos x, one over cos x. Then because of the common denominator, I can bring them together and say the numerator is sine x plus one and the denominator is cosine x. So it's just another example like your problems. Your problem may be somewhat different. Third example, let's look at add or subtract as indicated. Simplify your answer as much as possible. Leave your answer in terms of sine and or cosine x. So here's 1 over sine x minus sine x. I cannot add these until I get a common denominator. And when I'm done, I'm going to leave this as my answer. So I form the common denominator, 1 over sine x minus sine x squared over sine x. I multiply the top and bottom of sine x over 1 with sine x to make common denominator. Multiply by sine x on the bottom gives me sine x. Multiply by sine x on the top gives me sine squared x. This is 1 minus sine squared x over sine x. Now, I want the answer in terms of sine x or cosine x only. No sine squared x's. So I'm going to remember the Pythagorean theorem that says cosine squared plus sine squared is 1 for any angle, x theta, whatever you're using as an angle. So that means if I subtract sine squared x from both sides, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So when I get done, I should write cosine squared x over sine x. Now you could say, which answer should I prefer? I guess I prefer the second answer because it's somewhat smaller. I guess I do have to allow the cosine squared in here. I can't just completely eliminate that. I can rewrite cosine over sine x as cotangent, but they didn't ask me to do that. So I would expect that your answer should be cosine squared x over sine x in this case. And this is a possibility but it's not simplified as much as possible. I would not accept that answer in this case. There's some quick examples for you to consider in these problems.